love saving lives, yeah? So I'm here to save life. Are you, are you gonna help me save life, bro? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Why not? What do I do? So, we've already loaded the package inside the zip. Okay. So, you just take it like this. Then, so come, come this direction. Then, there's a handle here. Th this is the first time I'm applying my engineering so, career. Okay. Yeah. This side, right? Yeah, it's, yes. Ah! <laughs> Aviation engineer. No, Click. So you have something we call the walk around checks. The walk around checks, yeah. Huh? You start checking by looking at the voltage when it's not falling to the low voltage that we don't in the space. Yeah, exactly. Then we check the lanterns, whether they are seated. The nose screen is flashing and secure. Okay. I'm going to let you launch the drone. So I'm going to ask for clear. Are you ready? I'm ready. More than ready. <laughs> Hmm. The plan says three nine nine. Okay, for launch, this place is clear. Launch is clear. No wind. Delivering in five minutes at Quan IRCO HC. There's no wind. This launch is clear. Clear for launch. Take sessions. Clear to launch. So are you ready to save a life? <laughs> of course, more than ready. <laughs> so, <man. laughs> so come to this side for okay. me. Okay. I'm going to release this button. I will press this. This will turn green. Mm. And you just press this button. Okay. All right. Spinning motors. Say straight now in three, two, one. Seven zero two. <laughs> See, this is medical logistics made easy with just a click. My goodness, I can't wait to save thousand folks, man. You guys are not dying anymore. I'm here to save your lives, right? One of my biggest goal on social media is to touch lives. But I feel like Zipline is touching more lives than me. Very true. So welcome to Zipline Aminakon. This is the first of six centers we have in Ghana. Amazing. Zipline is a US-based company based in San Francisco. We started some few years ago in Rwanda, first in Africa. And then from Rwanda, we moved to Ghana. So in 2019, Zipline started operation in Ghana in partnership with the Ministry of Health and the government of Ghana. And since then, we've been on the trajectory. Zipline is on a mission to build the first logistic company that serves all, equal, all humans equally. That's why we are here. We supply from medical products, drugs, vaccines, blood, and other essential uh, products to hospitals all across Ghana. We serve over 2,700 hospitals in Ghana from basic products through to emergency and life-saving medicals that are delivered on daily basis to facilities across the country. So for today, we'll be walking through our call center that receives the calls from the various hospitals and then we'll move to our fulfillment area as well where we house all the commodities that we serve to these hospitals. There are quite a number of gadgets in there that you'll be seeing from cold to ultra cold fridges for the vaccines and all that. And then we walk through the flight area where you will have the opportunity to launch a drone, which potentially will be delivering a life-saving medication to somebody in Ghana. So the main target audience for our center is hospitals. We have over 2,700 hospitals, like I did mention. And for us, access is a key concern for us. Mm. So we target most of the remotest areas of Ghana, mm. very difficult to reach locations, mm. mountainous, very terrible roads. And especially in rain season like this, places like um, the Western North region, the Northeast region, especially now that the Bagri Dam is open and the whole place is flooded, this is where we come in handy. And we supply these people with essential commodities that they need to have their hospital running on a daily basis. From the lowest healthcare facility we call CHIPS mm. in Ghana, to clinics, to hospitals, all the way to regional and teaching hospitals, we save them equally. I really want to know how it works. So if you can take me through the whole system and uh, we'll follow up from there. All right. This is our call center, as uh, Maoli said. This is where we interface with um, our customers, which are the health facilities. Okay. So we receive their orders from here. 
we update them once we launch packages to them it contains the medicine so we notify them when the drone leaves here when it's close to delivery that's five minutes away and when it actually delivers at the facility so they can have visibility on everything that is going on and they are always aware when they are getting their packages and then they can make arrangements to pick them up so once we receive the orders from yeah. here and the process the next thing is for the warehouse to put together the package and then hand over to the flight operations team so they can launch the drone to the facility and then they receive their okay. their orders i really want to see all right so we can proceed to the warehouse and then have a look at what goes on in there Okay, Woody, so um, you yeah, are welcome to our fulfillment operations area. Yes. So it's a restricted area, so we'll have to go through some safety protocols. I hope you don't mind. No, I don't mind at all. <laughs> Good. Yes. Okay, so this is our fulfillment area. So the boxes for delivery? Exactly. Boxes oh. for the delivery. How, I, I was thinking mm -hmm. when the medicine drops from the drone, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't get affected. But now I'm seeing that it's well packaged, man. Because exactly. even this with the rubber in there. Exactly, Ooh. exactly, exactly. So um, uh, the payload that we normally work with is a two kilogram payload. Okay. And this is what you see here. So um, the box comes with several elements you have. Um, this year, that sort of insulates the mm. package mm. from, you know, breaking when it drops. Mm. You also have um, a parachute. The parachute is to help the package drop wow. slowly and reliably to the specific spot where it is um, designed to drop. So that's, that's the, the aerodynamics of the, the package. So the package is two kilograms also because um, we don't have any intention of replicating the existing supply chain systems in the country. So our job is to plug in supply chain gaps. So what that means is that when for instance you have a facility running out of stock they can call on us then what we do is that we package controlled quantities of medications that they need for a very short period of time then we deliver to them so our job is not to deliver huge you know quantities of products to these facilities our job is to just ensure that whenever facilities run out of stock or whenever facilities need some critical medications to save the life the lives of patients they are able to get so, access to which it. means that this company comes in when there's an emergency. When there's an emergency or when there's an urgent need of a product of some sort. So this package, for instance, that you see here, yeah. can actually deliver 30 vials of vaccines. And usually for small clinics in rural areas, that is enough for like a, a one-month consumption or a one-month immunization mm, clinic. Mm. Then also, if you are looking at blood products, this package again can actually deliver two two, three units of blood products, depending on the type of blood products that you're looking at. Wow. And that's enough to save like a pregnant woman's life or even save a little child's life. Well, what are the kind of product that um, you deliver? So we deliver medical products, we deliver blood products, and we also deliver vaccines. So um, you realize that on our shelves, we have different kinds of products. So before we started operations in Ghana, what we did was to work with the Ministry of Health to identify products that were of importance or products that were critical uh, when it comes to our area logistics. So we worked with the Ministry of Health to um, map out products that mm -hmm. they felt mm -hmm. would, um, would, would, would be essential for us to deliver using drones. So we have um, your emergency critical kinds of products. We also have normal over-the-counter products, specific over-the-counter products that are of high demand in some of the areas that we serve. We also have vaccines, which we store in these uh, coaching um, equipment. And we also have blood products that we serve, you know, um, facilities that are in need of blood products. So the fridges that you see here are for vaccines. We have routine vaccines. We also distribute COVID vaccines as well. And the fridge that you see here are for blood products. So we have your normal whole blood, then we also, what we, we also have what we call componentized blood. So componentized blood are blood products that are used for specific, you know, conditions. Mm. So let me just show you. So this, for instance, we call fresh frozen plasma, right? So we have fresh frozen plasma um, for to, to help in supporting some of the hospitals that wow. we serve with uh, componentized blood when you have cases that actually require this. But aside this, we also have cryoprecipitate. We have whole blood products for facilities that are in need of such products. So I, what I want to know is like, is this free for the person who is calling? 
So the Ministry of Health, um, the relationship that we have with the Ministry of Health is such yeah. that we actually deliver all these medications to facilities when they call on us without the facilities bearing any cost. Wow. So originally the supply chain system is such that whenever items are delivered to facilities, they pay for just the products, right? That is if they go through their normal processes of delivery. What the Ministry of Health has done through um, the standard operating procedure that it has put together for our operations is such that we still deliver the items to the facilities. The facilities to still pay for the products to the regional cold rooms or the regional store rooms that we pick up the products from. But at the end of the day, the Ministry of Health is the, is the institution that pays for the delivery Deliver. of the products. So no facility pays for the deliveries that we actually make to them. Hello, sir. Yeah. How are you doing? By his grace, uh, doing well. Okay. Uh, you are the doctor of this facility, health facility? Yes, please. Okay. The reason why I'm here is I want to know the impact of the drone delivery of a medical product. How has it impacted your health facility so far? Uh, it's very helpful mm. because uh, the system we run uh, now, they supply drugs four times in a year. That is a LMD, last mile delivering a system that uh, we are running. Okay. And sometimes when we run out from drugs and uh, we request from a zip line and within uh, 10 minutes, then they supply. And uh, our medical supply, some of the routine drugs that usually run out, they argument that to the America, uh, uh, regional medical store. Hmm. For example, our nurses will be on the field and then the community health nurses will be on the field and will run out of a vaccine. So we request and they deliver. Then the motorbike pick it to where they are in the community to continue their so delivery. Before yeah. zip line, mm -hmm. how are you receiving your medical We product? have to drive all along to Kofodia Regional Medical Store to procure our drugs. That's in how many hours? What? It takes us about two hours to get to Kakofodo Regional Hospital right. before you are able to pass through the system. Right now, just 10 minutes? 10 minutes. The drone, within 10 minutes, it's when you good. request, within 10 minutes, you will be at the delivery point and then pick your product and then uh, redistribute it to the various units. All right. Yeah. That's and amazing. It, yes. And it's helping us. For instance, for last week we were managing the case and we ran out of uh, this uh, local uh, anesthesia, xylocaine. Mm. So we have to call and then they deliver and we quickly hot, infuse the site and then do the suturing. Wow. Yeah. I want to say. It's uh, helping there. Uh, it's helping. Mm. Helping. Thank you so much for talking to me. Really, I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, now I think I understand what happens. So because we went to the communication room, so mm -hmm. he communicates with this guy right here. And can we do some? You know some packaging for people to know exactly. that you know exactly. i'm not faking it yeah so yeah. They, they, they've ordered something right yes. the they've ordered something yes uh, what is it can we help you package it okay sure oh okay So um, what you see him doing here uh -huh. is to um, interact with the fulfillment system to ensure that indeed we have the product available and also go through the entire ordering process. So he's trying to do that. So what we normally do is that for all the facilities that we serve, mm. we sort of upload their data onto the performance system so that when a facility, call, if a facility calls on, that, on us, we are very sure that the products that the facility is ordering for are products that can be delivered to the facility. Because you know in Ghana, um, the different levels of hospitals or health centers that we have 
have specific kinds of products that they can order for. Mm. So you can't have, for instance, the lowest level of our healthcare system ordering for blood products. Exactly. Right? So our performance system has been taught um, to actually respond to such orders, such that when a facility that is not supposed to order for a product orders for that product, our performance system will not allow us to serve that particular order. Wow. So what you see there is um, the product being packaged. So when the product, when it's confirmed that the product is available, the product is then packed, first of all, by wrapping it in the damage. The damage is supposed to help, first of all, to maintain the temperature of the product. And it's also helped to also you know, uh, 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 protect the product in some form when it comes to, you know, absorbing shocks during the drop and all that. I, I love the fact that everyone working in here is young. Very, very young. So what we do is that um, we will normally recruit very young people, um, pharmacists, um, engineers. For our warehousing operations, we'll normally go for nurses, pharmacists, physician assistants. But for our flight operations, we'll normally recruit engineers. And we are very, very intentional about our hiring to the extent that we try as much as possible to ensure that 50% of our, um, the people that we hire into the company are actually women. Um, we also go a step further in ensuring that even for our support staff, we recruit them from the communities that we find our distribution centers in. So all the drivers, the cleaners that you find around are actually people recruited from the very communities that we serve. And it's a way of sort of integrating our uh, operations into the community. Can I, can I bring uh, my internship letter? I, I'm an aviation engineer, so yeah, yeah, yeah I, maybe I need to start practicing. <laughs> you are welcome. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? You work here too? Yes, I do, I do. Wow, this is, this is a black woman empowerment, eh? Because they were, they were telling me that 45% of the women that work here, the people that work here are women. Yeah, that's I, totally spot on. I thought they were lying to me. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? Okay, so we are currently um, in the flight operations area. Okay. And um, I'll be taking you through a little bit of what we do before you go in there too. I always call this part the cool side of town. So those okay. where, where all the I love happen. that. I love that. Okay. So we would start from the dashboard. That is currently what you are seeing. Okay. And you can see a lot of numbers going on in there. So that is a breakdown of what we have and what can be used to fly the drones. Okay. What powers our drone is mainly the batteries. So right here is a categorization of the batteries that we have mm. that are fully charged. So you can see here that we have 13 batteries totally charged. Okay. Yes. And the batteries also have two um, categorization under them. We have the three dots batteries and the two dots batteries. So the two dots means that it can take you at maybe a shorter distance okay. as compared to the three dots. Wow. So say your 100% battery can take you throughout the day and 50 can take you maybe half day. Exactly. Maybe you're going to cycle to get something. Exactly. So, yeah. How many deliveries do you guys do in a day? Okay, so we can do from this nest, uh -huh. uh, we can do an average of about 100 to 120. 80 is the least that we would be doing in a day. Yes. Wow. And for the high demandedness, they can do about 300, about 200, 250 in a day. These are the batteries, eh? Exactly. Well, which one is fully charged? All right, so the blue light that is emitting here shows that this battery is fully charged. Okay. And as I mentioned, we have three dots. So you can see the three dots here, and you can see two dots. Yeah. So the battery is currently sitting on what we call smart chargers. And it doesn't only charge the battery, but it also cools it down at the same time. Wow. How far can the three dots battery go? So the, the distance? The, that's, that's a very good question. Yeah. The farthest facility that we serve is 57 minutes from here in the central region. So you go as far as central exactly. region of Ghana? Exactly. So we serve two regions, part of the eastern and part of the central. So 57 minutes away from here, this battery can stay in flight and serve that facility. And so that also gives us an idea that this battery would always be able to go according to the ETA yeah. because it can stay in flight for about two to two hours, 30 minutes. Yep. And 57 minutes means it can go in and yep. come back, back successfully. So this is the body. Now this body is made of styrofoam and you can touch it, you feel it. 
Exactly. Yeah. So uh, when you go buy a fridge, we have that thing that yep. is underneath for cushioning. Exactly. 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 So that is how this body was made. Mm. And on the body too, we have this part that is the more like the belly of the drone. So the belly of the zip. And this is where you get the package going. So these are just elastic bands. Okay. Immediately when uh, the drone gets to the destination, because there are sensors here and it uses GPS, it will just open up and, and um, it drops the it. package. Also on the body, note this, we have this tiny yeah. tail hook. And you are going to get to see how all of these are very important, including the QR codes, mm. are important to our operations. Operation. I wouldn't want to spoil the fun. So see <laughs> everything for yourself. Yeah. This is the wing of the drone or the zip. And it has a wingspan of 3.3 .3 meters. Yeah. Yes, it's not really heavy. Yes, but um, this area is something that you should look out for because it's a little bit sharper yeah. as compared to, to the, the side. side. Yes. And the last component that we would get to see outside is the nose cone or the nose foam. Um, but before we head in there, let's put on glasses for safety protocols. Yep. For the takeoff. All right. <laughs> so, and that is the last component which Ooh. Spoke of. So you can pick one as well, and you can see the is equally made of the same material that yeah. was used for the drone. That is styrofoam, and that is the last thing. Okay, so this is where um, I end with you, and Vanicia takes over. Wow, so. Vanicia. What do you, what happens in here? All right, so. I heard uh, my colleague Eva tell you that that's like the cool side of town, but this is the cooler side of town. <laughs> uh, so I'll take you through our flight operation. So here we have the launcher system and then we have the recovery system. Now, the, the unique things about our drones is that they do not land and they do not um, take off, right? And so for us to get the drones into the air, they need to be catapulted by this launching system. So that's why we call this the launcher. And you might ask, okay, why did we have to do this uh, with the drones? Drones. For many drone operators, I think that um, takeoff, those who know so much about engineering, yeah. takeoff yeah. and, 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 and landing takes a lot of battery energy. So we wanted to find a way to be able to fly that far um, whilst conserving the Delivering battery energy. So that's why we're yes, catapulting the drones time. into the air with this launching system. So um, this is how our launches look like, and I'm sure that you'd get an opportunity to launch a drone to save a life. Definitely. All right. But I'm interested in the landing system. Of course. <laughs> so we call it, let me, let me correct you, it's called the recovery system. The recovery. Because the drones don't land, so it's a recovery system. Thank you. Okay. So this is our recovery system. Anytime our drone is in flight and it's, it's coming back to recover, it's always in communication with this um, recovery system. And so we have that as the capture line. Okay. I know that when Eva was showing you the drones, she showed you the hook. Yeah, um, at yeah. the tail fin of the drones. Yeah. And so when the, the drone is almost at, at the recovery point, it communicates with this system. The system lifts um, to meet the drone wh which, whichever direction it's coming from. So sometimes it comes from left, sometimes it's coming from, from right. right. And so it would communicate and say, for instance, recovering from left or recovering from right. And whatever the direction is, the capture line will turn towards that angle. And then the tail fin, the hook at the tail fin of the drone hooks the capture line and then it swings the drone to a stop. Wow. And there's like a 99.9% .9 um, chance that it always holds on to the, to the system. And, and you, 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 you drop it down? Yes, yes. So once um, the, the pendulum stops and then we have this button that presses and brings oh, it down okay. and then we recover the drones. So that's Amazing. It. Yeah. This is absolutely brilliant. The fact that young Africans are working tirelessly the use of technology to save lives in our community. You don't think they deserve a round of applause? I mean, your like will be a way of applauding them. So like this video, subscribe to be part of this awesome family. But most importantly, share for others to know that in Ghana, we use drones to save lives. Thank you.